Okay, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, good evening. Hi, everyone. So we are broadcasting today, uh, as always, uh, in uh, on uh, live, uh, you know, in the uh, uh, LinkedIn. Sorry, LinkedIn <laughs> so and YouTube. LinkedIn. It's- and it's on YouTube, also, we, it's on YouTube. Both are recorded. So if you are not able to, you know, watch it till the end, you know, it's recorded. Don't worry. Okay. Ah, and you definitely don't want to miss any of these tips. It, it would be good if you can put there that you can hear us and see us both at the LinkedIn and YouTube. Uh, Finsky, Krajanek, Miko is greet the world. Good evening from Finland. Yeah, uh, we are, Welcome. you know, saying, Hi, and if, if somebody from uh, LinkedIn perhaps can you know uh, uh, say something in the uh, in the comments, that would be great. I will check. I will check. I will start my LinkedIn on the phone if everything works. You know, pro- it works properly. Okay, there are like twenty people on LinkedIn. Uh, Antonin Předota is here. Okay, perfect. We can hear you because I think here we see only people uh, on the on the count. We see only people from YouTube because there was like almost 100 people registered. So uh, we may wait uh, a bit. Uh, there are, you know, more people coming on the LinkedIn and we can start, yeah. you know, Apani Haninen, hey. Uh, yeah, so uh, absolutely. So the let's kick it off. The, the team today, uh, uh, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, is executive presence, how to show up like a, like a leader, uh, you know, and uh, I may frame it what I what is kind of my experience from what I did and what I, I you know, perceive like from Bill Gates, Steve Baum and other, you know, top shots. You know, I was, you know, even trained by people like Jack Welsh, who unfortunately passed away. He was one of the probably best managers in the in the human history. Uh, so, and I will frame it, you know, uh, by, by a couple of ideas from my first book, The Positive Leader. I talked about the four piece of the positive leader and one specific, I think, handles the executive presence. Number one, it's like... Well, positive- yeah, 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 yeah. I know you're so excited to jump okay. in. For those people who don't know us yet, maybe we should do some introductions, huh? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's an option. Absolutely. I love that you want to go straight in and tell everyone. And so look, there are no, coming you, to, to be you. honest, you know, at nine o'clock, 9 PM, you know, there's a lot of football matches. I need to watch like, you know, Patrick <laughs> Schick, he plays, you know, against Celtic with Bayern Leverkusen. So I we need to be, I'm, I'm kidding. You know, <laughs> late yeah. So let's, let's lay the first and then I will say a couple of words about me and then we will continue. So Thank I you. stop now about the, you know, framework and let's introduce ourselves. Yeah, exactly. Because you got to keep us in suspense. We need to know about your four P's, but right. to kick it off. Hi everyone. I'm Lisa Kristen. I'm the CEO of a boutique consulting firm called Kristen Coaching and Consulting. And we work on leadership development. We develop 21st century leaders. So of course I have my MBA. I grew up my career in corporates. And what I started to realize is what we used to do in the 20th century, and sorry, what Jack Welch used to say, and we're all about productivity and we want to get to high performance. It just simply doesn't work in the 21st century. And that's why I love this concept of what role does executive presence play for us and how do we show up like a leader? So we're going to talk about that topic today. My background, I, uh, Vian and I know each other from the Institute of Coaching that's associated with Harvard Medical School. I'm also a member of the Forbes Coaches Council on the jury for the Innovation Olympics World in 2050. Lots of stuff going on there. If you want to know more about me, check out my profile, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to connect with all of you. And if for some crazy reason you've been living under a rock, you don't know who Jan is, Jan, please. Introduce yourself. Okay, Tell us who so, you are. Yeah, 22 years in Microsoft was a reasonable balance between failures and you know successes. No, I, I uh, you know, I think where where I was good, it was sales and marketing. I was really good in it. Where I did a very good job was like working, you know, with the with the people. Obviously, uh, if we talk about our topic about executive presence, I think I was quite successful. On the other hand, 10 years ago, I was deeply depressed. You know, right. And the, 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 the fact I was depressed is the fact that I was not able 
to renew my mental energy, you know, which which is also about executive presence, right? I was, you know, doing a lot of like physical rest. I was able to have a physical rest, but I did not have enough mental rest. That's why I was, you know, depressed. So I learned a lot how to work with top performers. That, that's my topic for 30 years, you know, right? Yeah. And now what I do, starting with the kids, we train like 7,000 kids. There is a program, Unlocking Children's Potential. Uh, you know, we, we, we wrote a book with my colleague, with Katarina. I obviously coach executives around the world. I'm with Lisa. That's where we met. That's the, you know, coaching uh, institute. That's the Harvard, you know, affiliate. Uh, I coach also for like six years already top athletes. I have a couple of Olympic Games winners and even from the last Olympics, it was quite successful. And I coach one of the best players in the world now in soccer, Patrick Schick, you know, <laughs> right? So it's a lot. Of, and I, I teach at different universities like Luxembourg University, Imperial College or, you know, in Seattle. But back to the back to the topic today. OK, uh, I will start by saying that, you know, though the, the, the framework in my first book, The Positive Leader and Positive Leadership has nothing to do with positive thinking. Positive thinking is important. Positive leadership is about finding what is best in you as a leader and then find what is best in the people, put them together, have a lot of synergy and inspire the whole group. And it doesn't matter where you are, whether you are the coach of national soccer team or you are, you know, running the large, you know, company. I think the principles are the same. So we talk with my, you know, counterpart, with my co-author, uh, Melina Costi. She is a business writer from UK. We talk about four pieces of the positive leadership. Positive people, this exactly like you need to find, you need to understand who you are to figure, figure out who you, you can be and figure out who are the other people. That's positive people. Second point is about positive purpose. Because if your work is like your, you know, meaning of your life, your purpose, you know, right, you are inspired. And if you are inspired, chances are that you as a leader and then the whole organization, if you will be able to inspire people, they'll be in so-called flow. And if people are in the flow, whether they are individuals or the groups, they are like 500 percent more productive. They are learning 450 percent faster and they are 400 percent, you know, more creative. Recently, I work, you know, with Shell and Shell did interesting study. They ask big question. What does it take to be, you know, among top five companies for 200 years in your specific? There, there are not that many companies. It's probably GE, Shell and a couple of others. OK. And the only long term competitive advantage they could find is your ability to learn fast. That's what, you know, we will be, we will be paid off. So that's the third point. Second point is positive purpose. The third point is positive process. And here I think, uh, you know, fits very well, uh, you know, executive present because it, the positive process, it's about energy, right? It's about four energies we have as a human beings, okay? Physical energy, emotional energy, mental energy, and spiritual energy. And my, my view is that the CEO means... Chief executive officer, it's all about scorecards and everything. You need to have a results, right? That's for sure. But then CEO for the future means also, and that's a lot about executive present, chief enthusiasm officer. And that enthusiasm got a two parts, energy. And we can talk about it, you know, later on, like deep, what it takes to have good, you know, energy. And inspiration. And EI means emotional intelligence. I just... I just friend of mine, Michael Jervas, who is a, the the you know psychologist for the Seahawks. That's one of the best teams in the in American football. They they won even you know uh, a couple of those you know cups. Uh, he he interviewed uh, uh, you know the uh, the guy who wrote the book uh, Emotional Intelligence. You know right, Daniel Goleman, and he he basically he was basically saying that. You know that emotional intelligence is very still very much missing. You can be very inter- you can have a very high IQ, but unless you have an EQ, I tell I tell you what, IQ to me, and I I'm, I think I'm good with the IQ, right? I think I'm. <laughs> yeah, right. right. I'm not saying that I'm, the, I'm I'm not saying that I am like the the uh, the basically cathedral of intelligence or whatever. No, I'm not Einstein, but I'm a quite smart guy. IQ is important, but it's not sufficient because even if you have a great strategy, great vision, unless you have an EQ, which means like you can influence emotions, your emotions, 
and the other people emotions manage them and so on so you have a good story and that story you can so so uh, so called so sell it you know right you have good communication skills because each and every person got a got a different you know perception even if you have a high you know iq if you are highly intelligent unless you have that you know emotional connection to that emotion energy forget it because if you yeah. if, I, if i take like this is the last point on executive presence if i take like my top five talents they are only in two groups there are like four groups of the talents according to gallup okay executive talents you are good to do things okay then you have influencing talents you are able to influence people then you have relationship building talents okay you are able to build relationship and last but not least it's strategic thinking that's the third, fourth column and my talents are only in strategic thinking and influencing and me as an executive i was like you know creating some strategy some ideas some visions and then i think i was able to make other people crazy quote, quote you know what i mean in a good sense uh, in a good I'm sense crazy. and you know move the the crowd because you as a leader if you are leading large organization you are not supposed to do each and every detail it's called micromanagement yeah. you are killing yourself and you are killing other people okay you need to inspire people so there is a common vision common understanding and you go and you do it and once you have it it's there are to me there is one thing which is happening on the market you know right that that's one battle like microsoft apple whatever is your industry you know different competitors and the other battle is in the mind of the people it's about you know chemistry because all brains and whether it's like individual brains or brain of the all organization is like chemistry and if if there is a good mood there's a good vision people like what they do there's a lot of endorphin dopamine serotonin oxytocin release and people feel good they like what they do they are very often in the flow if the work is a shit they hate what they do the manager is you know weak there's a lot of cortisol and adrenaline and guess what you know the performance goes down okay. so there's one thing on the market and the other thing it's chemical and that to me that's about executive presence and kind of the never give up you know notion that's what i learned in microsoft tanya she's running like part of the uh, you know europe now in in google she is a great you know uh, general manager there she worked with me in microsoft and microsoft or google those are like typical companies kind of the never give up the same with steve jobs unfortunately steve is no more with us steve jobs i mean he was fired from apple when he took over apple the capitalization was like 500 you know million us dollars yeah. now it's 2.3 trillion us dollars right so this is this is it and i'm not saying steve jobs was not well known for great you know management skills right <laughs> but for sure he was a he was a good leader and making like great you know vision so that's kind of the that's intro right. from you know me and then we can talk about charisma and more like how you can appear with your energies and so on and I will hand over to Lisa. Yes. Well, yeah, what I want to share, I mean, I uh, totally agree. I'm so inspired. And I can actually tell all of you the very first time that I remember going, what is this executive presence stuff? And it was, I studied politics. I went to university in Washington, D.C. And I'll admit, uh, I was a Democrat back then. I was so excited to go to the Democratic National Convention. So you go in, you the now, so, which means now you are a Republican. I am certainly not associated with any parties in the Look, U.S. What, I moved to what Switzerland. I'm always, Come on. What I'm always saying, Democrats in the U.S., they are still much more right wing as opposed to the most right wing parties in Europe. Point. You know what? Anyway. You're actually Point. right. Although that's shifting, we can talk uh, a lot of politics, but not let's today. <laughs> not here. I'll get slaughtered alive if I sure, share my sure. true thoughts. Um, but I was then at this Democratic National Convention. It was John Kerry, 2004. And um, we're there. You see a lot of people giving speeches, and they're good. And you have to imagine for politicians, they're some of the most charismatic people that exist, right? This is not a general population. This is charismatic, elected people, lifelong politicians exactly. standing up, giving wonderful speeches. They were fine. They were fine. One guy gets on the stage, starts talking. Everybody's silent. Stands out so much more than any other speaker. Everyone's looking around. 
who is this guy? What's his name? We can't pronounce it. I've never heard of him before. What? Who is this? But he has such a message. It grabs us. And it was Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. And it was, he was still unknown, local. That was his breakthrough moment. Through that speech, everyone said, whoa, this guy's going somewhere. Well, now we can look back and we know he became president. He's that good. And I remember thinking, how did he do that? How did he get 10,000 people to stop, d dead silence, stop and zone in for like 20 minutes? Why was he so much better than everyone else? And that's when I said, ah, oh, that's the difference when you have the message, when you believe in the message, when you give hope, that's what you were alluding to. Leaders can admit things are going really badly right now. Things are hard right now. It's COVID-19. This is, we're not saying things are easy. But if you want to have great executive presence, you always leave with a message of hope. Yes, things are very bad. This is the first practical tip for you tonight. Things are bad. Acknowledge it. Don't sugarcoat it. Like Jan said, don't do, oh, everything's fine. We're so positive. Mm -mm. We acknowledge it for what it is. And we tell people where the future can be that's brighter. We give them hope. We give them a place to dream to. And that's what Barack Obama did. And that's when I said, oh, there's something to this. And there's much more about it. Actually, I won't go through a whole long section because I love the dialogue when Jan and I are having it together. But I do want to say, I when I think about executive presence, I actually break it down into sections. And so the very first section that you can work on today is think about your credibility. What do people know about you and say about you before you've even entered the room? Because so many people think executive presence is how do I hold my body? Well, people are going to judge you and they're going to judge you fast, but they're going to judge you maybe before they've ever even met you because they know about you. They they maybe looked you up online. They've heard about you through people, you know, mutually in common. They've seen you in the news. So what's that reputation? One of the things you can start to do is build credibility, right? Absolutely. I don't know. Jan, if you were going to go get surgery, would you go to a doctor who actually went to medical school or would you come to my house and say, Lisa, my shoulder's hurting? No, <laughs> you want someone who's qualified, yes? <laughs> so we have to make sure our, our credibility is there. So, you know, you have to get some sort of education or, you know, associate yourself with people. Sometimes this is network. Some of you maybe have never heard of me before. You're like, who's this Lisa gal? I don't know, but she's with Jan. And I think Jan's a pretty great guy. And so I already believe Lisa has some credibility just because of the network, who she's with, who she's associated with. And that can go the other way for anyone who's watched, for example, Bill Gates's reputation go down the drain because he was hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein, mm -hmm. who you know, maybe wasn't such a great character. <laughs> that's that's half, that's half unfortunately true. I think you know uh, that that's one part, and the other part, which which I think is not fair to Bill at all, is the vaccination, you know, thing because that that's a stupid and it's very hard. In fact, you know, I was at the like online. There was an online call because there was a guy called Ray Ray Oze who used to work in Microsoft. He, he got from the you know. Friend of mine is running the Museum of the Computer History in oh, in, cool. in San Francisco, and he, he was getting some award. And he, Bill talked about that, and he basically said it's very hard to you know defend yourself about the vaccine, you know, right? And, and it is, it is because today everybody can write whatever you want, you know, right? And then if if somebody who is well known is taking it, so it, 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 this is tough. But to, to to add a bit, you know what Lisa said. I think this is very true about like your credibility, and I think it has to do like almost like building your you know executive presence. It's about to me. It's about three things. You need to understand who you are, so you can be really authentic. Because if look, if I would would pretend, hey, you know what. I'm so much empathic person. I'm not the I'm good, you know, with empathy, but not great, right? That's, that's what, you know, I'm good with like strategy, you know, vision and so on. So you need to understand who you are. Then you can build the story because you said that story needs to be critical, right? Because you can move people. There are always two parts of, of, of the, you know, like how you can move people, why people would accept change. 
pain and pleasure. And the good thing is to combine both. You know, there's a part of the pain and the part of the pleasure. In in the case, you know, it's yeah. about the future. It's a part of the hope. You know, right? So you combine those. So it is about what kind of the story. And and you need to understand who are the other people on the other side. Okay. And the third point is who are the other people? What kind of the relationship I have? Because this is all based on on you know, as you rightly said on you know to understand who are the other people but also trust okay and i will i think trust is about two things you need to be authentic you may think that guy is crazy but it's him okay because there is a in, in psychology if you would study psychology there's something they call incongruence you are able in 18 milliseconds to figure out that the other person is not authentic from the body language don't ask me how they figure out it's 18 milliseconds, but this is it, you know, right? Because it's called gut feeling. I mean, the, the women, because you you were like taking care of the kids, whatever. Women are even better with intuition than the men, you know, right? Because women... In I the, don't know if that's true, but I'll take the compliment. In, no, no, no. It is, <laughs> I mean, according to some studies, I'm just saying what I, what I you know, read, right? So it is about authenticity, number one. And number two, as Lisa rightly said, it is about credibility, you know, right? And people are credible if they, if, if, if people, if you are predictable, you can be very tough with the people, but you need to be predictable. If you are saying something on Monday and then you're changing the strategy on Tuesday and there's something very different on Wednesday, forget it. People will say, I tell you, because I, what is happening in the mind of the other people, they amygdala. It's like, oh, this is crazy, you know, right? Because amygdala, that's the small, you know, monkey in our brain. Here, that monkey will wake up if it's dangerous, if it's chaotic, and if it's not predictable. This is it. And that means there is a lot of stress. People will stop, you know, to believe you. And, and this is it. So th this is, if we talk about executive presence, this is it. And I think sometimes less is more. There's another, Lisa, I will, you know, throw it, you know, like to you. <laughs> I how feel like about, I have to pull it out. About people, because they, people are sometimes saying, oh, that guy is very much extroverted. That's why he's a great leader. I'm introvert. I cannot be a great leader. What do you think about it? No way. No, no that's way. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we need all different kinds of leaders. And by the way, I'll let you know, I'm ex an extrovert. I'm very loud. I'm from New York. You hear this. And often I get the feedback, sometimes, Lisa, you're a little too intense for me. So often when I'm facilitating large groups or having speakers, I try to actually balance my energy. Because some people need a break from extroverts who are loud and I cheerleading agree. and innovators. <laughs> Maybe you need a break from me after this, Jan. No, look, uh, and, uh, yeah. And the only difference is that introverts are taking energy from themselves. So if they are like, in a very extroverted environment, they are more tired and the other way around. If me, if I will be sitting in front of the PC for 12 hours, I'll be absolutely tired. I hate if I'm like lonely. I mean, I, I, I'm I okay if like somebody's talking to me from the screen, even if, if it's YouTube, that's okay. <laughs> you know, right? But this is it. And that's the only difference. But if you know how to work with your energy, that if, if you are, you know, introvert, you can get energy back if you are alone and the other way around. This is it. If you take great, you know, like Bill Gates was introvert, Gandhi introvert, you know, Nelson Mandela introvert, Steve Jobs introvert, right? It has nothing to do introversy or extroversy. has nothing to do with the leadership and your ability to have like executive presence. That's exactly right. And sometimes I love what you're saying here, Jan, because like I said, I, I sort of have this model of executive presence. And the first is before you get in the room, what about when you first walk into the room and how you show up? What's your energy? How do you show up? Makes a big difference because not everybody does know you or maybe they're open to making a first impression. So the way that you show up needs to feel... I'm standing within myself. I'm okay. I, right. And so in if the present looking, moment. Exactly. If I'm looking nervous, if I'm shy, if I'm right, jittery, people pick up on that. I love that you said this 18 milliseconds or whatever it is, because that's exactly what it is. We sense we're so good. 
we can sense people and what they're feeling now, not consciously in our brains, but unconsciously we can read it. That's why if someone's like, you know, texting on their phone and they go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh yeah. Yeah. But you know, they're not listening because they respond half a second too late. Oh, really? They're not there. They're not present. So the first thing you need to do is show up present. Now you can't do that. If for example, you're exhausted. That's now, for it. me, I, I'm an extrovert, but I'm also something called a highly sensitive person. Now, HSP, it doesn't mean I cry a lot or I like sad movies. What it means is all the stimuli that come in from the environment, loud sounds, right. when people are touching me, when it's very bright, it just sort of overwhelms my brain a bit and I get tired. So what I have realized is before I go into a, an event or I'm going to speak or even in a meeting, I actually close my eyes because 80% of our stimuli come from our vision. I close my eyes and that helps me to sort of regroup my brain, stop any new noise, any new stimulus coming in and recollect back into my body. And from there, we have the choice. Okay, I'm going to go into this meeting. How do I want to show up? Great. Lisa, set your shoulders back, stand up tall like you're a puppet and your marionette string is being pulled, right? And you can, um, you know this, Jan, from all of your sports work, visualize how well it's going to go. By the way, I also visualize that I'm going to go speak and I'm going to trip and I'm going to fall or I'm going to make a really big mistake. But I visualize that in advance so I'm prepared. Marionette's tall, shoulders down, smiles on. And that's how you can show up choosing how you want to. Now, some of you don't want to smile. Don't smile if that's not you. But be conscious how you show up. Don't just rush in because you're late and you, you know, have crazy hair. And, oh, sorry, I'm late. And it was such a crazy day. And I'm so tired. And that's not the energy you want to send out. So be the energy that you want to transmit. And take the 30 seconds if you need to, to transmit it that way. Lisa, you were now getting cut a bit, you know, for some oh, reason. Oh, it was me? Okay. Now it's you. It's back, but the, 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 the video is still... So I'll pass it to you and see if I can fix this on my side. Okay. All right. So uh, Lisa talk uh, a lot about, you know, body language. And you should understand it. It doesn't matter whether you are, like, athlete or executive. The body is you know, uh, basically where if you take emotions and emotions very often, <laughs> uh, the kind of the emotions you are having are decisive for your body language, right? And how emotions, and a lot of people think emotions are somehow hardly wired in my brain. It's all bullshit, okay? If you want to learn more about emotions, top notch is we've got Lisa Feldman at the IOC, right? Yes. She is great. She is a you know great uh, professor, and she in in her you know uh, research she figured out that emotions are created basically based on your experience. Whatever sits in your subconsciousness in your long term memory creates your emotions. Because the thing is that, for example, I can be fearful of you know something, and my wife because of her you know past she's absolutely fine with that situation and the other way around because we have everybody got a different mental picture of the world you know right yeah. our brains are wired differently and can be rewired it's called neuroplasticity it can be you know re rewired right so emotions are created number one so it's good to train you know like if you have positive emotions that's fine you know because usually you feel it on your body i feel good you know it's all is fine but suddenly if you have some negative emotions for example a trigger can be that your boss is very critical about your presentation, about the results or whatever. I mean, then the tendency is to go like your shoulders down, your head down, and then right. cortisol is released, and it's unfortunately, you know, bad also, right? So you can, you can, you know, have that, you know, impulse, and then you can talk to your people, and they'll immediately figure out, hey, this is not good. What the there's something, you know, happening there. So. You need to train your body. What I'm saying, that champions feel 
as a winners, even though they are losing momentally. That's what I'm training, especially like all my athletes. I'm telling them, even though your opponent is scoring, you still need to feel like a you know winner. Okay. If you watch, if you watch people like Novak Djokovic or Federer, they are losing like 5-0 and they still walk like lions, you know. This is it, you know, right? Because and but yeah. it's quite normal. If if, for example, the goalkeeper is getting the goal. You know, he or she is like, you know, disappointed, shoulders down, so on. You need to get encouragement. You'll say, hey, we continue. There's still, you know, time to do things. It's the same with the coaches. The best coaches, when they, you know, team is losing, they try to encourage them. Hey, let's go, you know, let's let's continue that. If you if you watch the goalkeeper of uh, Bayern München, that guy, whenever he go, he's getting the goal, he stays like that. And he's kicking the ball very high because he wants to get energy back. And this is it, you know, right? Because, I mean, if everything goes well, everybody can win. That's, you know, that's very easy. If the things are shit, if the things are going to the south, that's the re- that, that that's about executive presence, that you need to really have this, you know. And that's if you study, like, history, all, you know, uh, great fighters in the history, they were like that, like never give up and encourage people in the top situation, you know, right? That's uh, it. And yeah, yeah, and what I want to share is I can't put point here. There's a book here, The Infinite Game by Simon oh, Sinek, the start great. with why guy. And it's very yes, good. great book because here's what you can learn from it, and here's what can help you to show up like a leader no matter when you're losing, right? And I can tell you this from a fact because I was this close to closing a very important client on Monday and in the negotiation, it fell apart. And so I felt like, man, I suck. I'm a loser. Why did I, you know, mess that up? And I wanted to sit in my annoyed anger, self deprecating mood, but I had another negotiation with another new client on Tuesday. So what you do with the infinite game is you say, listen, that was one game, but it's not fixed. It's not like a soccer match or a football game that has an ending time and the number of goals determines the win or not. This is life. This is business. It's on and on and on and on. It's infinite. It never ends. And so if you've lost one shot, shoulders up, show up like a leader because you have more opportunities to keep shooting to keep getting new clients, to keep growing, to to keep making better presentations. So show up proud because you have, until the day you die, all new opportunities to keep getting better. And I want to make sure we get to the questions that we have here. Let's go, go, yeah, uh, from uh, Miko. Can you see those questions, you know, here on the screen? Uh, Because I can, you know, put them on the screen. I have two questions for Lisa today. Sorry, no problem. I talk a lot. When can we expect to read Lisa article she creates for Forbes? Number one question. So article on Forbes. Secondly, is planning to start her executive presence on Instagram? Question. Whether you... <laughs> so great questions. Number one, I did mention for those who follow me on LinkedIn, I posted and I said, hey, I'm going to write an article for Forbes about executive presence. What questions do you want answered? So a bunch of people wrote down some good questions um, and that's going to be coming out soon. I'm drafting it now. And then am I going to go on Instagram? Funny enough. Yes, I just started it yesterday. So come and follow me. I think I can't remember my handle, so I can't tell you what it is. Uh, but come find me, Lisa Kristen. I'll give, I'll give you a follow. I'd like 30,000 people here. You know, great. Your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send them all my way. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't want to talk about politics, but I certainly can't let there be any confusion. I am not a Trump supporter. <laughs> that I have to clear up, but then nothing else. All right. So, okay. Thanks, Let's Nico. not talk about, you know, politics. That's, uh, <laughs> The then, next guys, whoever else wants to, you know, ask questions, we can see it here, both from the YouTube and and uh, LinkedIn. Vladimir Polomsky, there's a we, we are not now, so I will read it and then I will get. Yeah, we are not. Hi Lisa, <laughs> hi Lisa and Jan. According to John Burdett, senior executive coach, successful leader is the only one who employs head, frames direction. Empowers hand, generates movement, delivers, you know, engage hearts. That's the third point. So people get why and are touched and enriches the spirit. So it talks to the meaning and purpose of the individuals. The trick is to have all elements in balance. What is your view on this? 
what makes successful leader for today uh, unpredicting turbulent uh, in unpredicting uh, turbulent times in in your view i think uh, vladimir it, it is a good there are a lot of framework there's a i mean framework i'm i'm using like basically i'll i'll put it down now <laughs> I can't see. Uh, uh, framework i'm using heavily because i think it's a proven framework because it was created more than 2000 years ago in all greece it's called kalokagatia basically four energies physical energy you know emotional energy uh, mental energy and spiritual energy it's a it's a similar i would say it's like there's an overlap 60 percent maybe with that framework right uh, i i think if you use some framework because it's all about models if you use some models it's not like 100 percent true or not but it's you if you start to use it you need to believe in that model and you need to make sure that your people will start to believe in what you believe because unless look for followers leaders are not defined by the business card because there are nice names like president or chairman or ceo or whatever that's nice you know right but leaders are not defined by the business card leaders are defined by the people who are following them and people will follow you in my view for a couple of reasons number one you will help them to understand who they are so they can figure out who they can be you know right how they can you know move in their career how they can use best in them that's number one okay number two you are able also to put them together with the other people so there's a lot of synergy one guy talents are covering the other guy weaknesses and the other way around and the last point they are really inspired by the vision because i was first 10 years in microsoft i was very much inspired by pc at every desk you know vision by bill gates right then you know unfortunately there was no great with steve Ballmer is a great you know leader fantastic guy now he's you know uh, uh owning the clippers the basketball team but uh, we in my view at that time we struggle a bit you know with that vision what is the microsoft was a very successful uh, company but we struggled a bit you know, like what is that vision what is after you know a computer at every desk right so uh, this is it. So those are like a couple of points, which I think whether it's turbulent or non-turbulent, people will, you know, follow you because that, that is, if there is a war, you know, people still follow the generals, you know, even though they may die. I mean, the way how SEAL operation, this is the toughest unit in U.S. Navy, is trained. They are trained before each and every battle because each and every operation they can lose their lives basically and they can lose their lives for they for their you know friends in the unit okay right so this is not for everybody that 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 kind of the you know job so uh yeah that, so yeah. that's that's in the nutshell about leadership yeah yeah and i want to add here i love what you said and i this model's good the, with these these yeah. four elements what we really need in the 21st century which isn't talked about enough is emotional articulation so what does that mean and why are we talking about emotions? Jan mentioned earlier, emotional intelligence is very important. When things are constantly changing. So Jan also said this about our brains, right? We have this threat detection in the back of our minds and the threat detection goes off. Actually, it's the worst when it's uncertain. If we yeah. know we're being chased by a lion, if we know something bad is gonna happen, we can take action. We know what to do. But if we're not sure, am I, aren't I, should I, shouldn't I, how do I keep looking? The brain hates that uncertainty. Exactly. And that's what's happening all day, every day in your jobs, in the modern work, because we don't know what's happening. Uh, is Are our jobs going to be replaced? Is an AI coming? How are we going to have blockchain be a part of this? Um, what, what if our market changes? What if there's a disruption from this? All the time, it's that uncertainty. So you have to hack your brain a little bit. You have to work with your brain to calm it down. And so the best way for you to do that is to notice what you're feeling. Because rationally in business, we're taught, I'm fine, right? Ignore those emotions. Everything's going to be okay. I'm going to be hyper resilient. I'm going to move on fast. Now, ah, so if I can name what I'm feeling, then I can actually solve the emotional problems that I have inside. And when I can do that, that's when I can show up calm, show up having my energy and think clearly enough to build the vision that people want to follow. By the way, people don't understand this about the job of a leader in the 21st century. You don't need to be the expert. 
You don't need to have all the answers, but you need to be able to facilitate the answers to come out. And so the way that you do that is by constantly creating clarity. CCC, constantly creating clarity. What's my role and responsibility? Uh, what direction are we focused in? What projects do we prioritize or not prioritize? Constantly creating clarity. If you can be the one who creates the vision, who creates the roadmap, who creates clarity when there's chaos, confusion, uncertainty, people will come to you because they don't like that uncertainty in their minds. And if you're the one who can solve that for them and put them at ease. Yeah. And the one, so tool, the one tool I was very often, you know, using, I absolutely agree about the clarity because clarity is building predictability. And if you are predictable, people, they, they trust you. They believe in you. There's an easy to use tool, you know, right? You can, with your team, you can always talk after, you know, one week or one month, doesn't matter. You know, you can talk, like, remind yourself what was going well. The deals which were going well, like during the post-mortem, you know, uh, feedback sessions, whatever. So remind what was going well. Second R means like repair what was not going well. Okay. If you lost, for example, some deals, what were the triggers? You know, why maybe the preparation was not good? Why your competitors won over you? Whatever. That's the so remind what was good, repair what was not good, kind of what are the learnings. And third point, it's about the vision. Imagine you need to tell people what will be the next you know step so it is about you know the the, the vision you know right and if you if we talk about the visualization there is a visualization and it's really like you are visualizing what is happening there is something which goes beyond visualization it's called imagination that you involve the other senses because lisa mentioned rightly are you know eyes but then we have like audio channel you can you can say hey you win, you just won Olympic games. So they are like playing national anthem. You have this, you know, golden medal around your neck. You know, uh, there is a flag, you know, what do you see, what do you feel? Stuff like that. Because that's, if, if that goes, you know, everything's together. That's what Obama was great in that speech. Yes, you know, that yes. People should listen to that speech. There, there's obviously like, you know, uh, uh, the Martin Luther King speech, you know, right? But Obama was good in like creating, like putting all senses together because people that's if you if you ever read good fairy tale, good story, you know, like good bedtime story. This is it. It's like he was looking like that. He was he you you could hear that stuff like that. Right. No, I'm, I'm not kidding, because, guys, we we on one sense, people are like very, you know, sophisticated machine. But we, in, in terms of how we process information, is not necessarily that great. It's all based on the stories. If you have a good story, if you can get emotions of the people, if you can get, you know, emotional connection, this is it. And that's what Obama, exactly, they could not even pronounce his name, but that was he get because he was able to create that, you know, story. That's exactly what happened. P kids, you know, 20 years ago, kids almost slow, step by step, they stop, you know, they were like stopping to read, you know, uh, uh, the, the books. Okay. And then what? Harry Potter came. Good mm -hmm. story. Good story can go after whatever technology. Technology is a platform, whether it's Microsoft, Google, Apple, doesn't matter. It's a platform. But if you have like good content, good story on it, this is it. Even like in, you go on Instagram, there is like, you can post something and you can get a story, right? What was happening that day? You can get a story for them. <laughs> this is it, you know. Right? Thank you for these tips, Jan, because as uh, as I've just seen in the comments here, I guess I need some help on my Instagram. <laughs> I'm going to need to improve it a little bit, but you got to give me a little time. You got to give me a little time. But I'm one good. other thing that feels really yeah. important that we haven't mentioned yet um, is power dynamics. Mm. Ooh, power, showing up like a leader. Because here's the thing that most people try to do when they try to show up like a leader and they think, here's what a leader looks like. I have to show up strong. So if we're looking at power, I have to show up as the leader and these people have to follow me, right? So the power dynamic becomes off. And what I want to share with you is real, true, effective leaders figure out how to come eye level. Now, what that means is when you walk into a room, you feel intimidated by something or someone, right? I often find myself in rooms where I'm like, whoa, everyone else here has done way more than I have, which is great because it means I can learn. 
But instead of feeling like I'm the lower part, which is then when you get the body and you look awkward and you don't, you're not sure if you should speak up because you might sound dumb. No, come in as equal and raise your power level. Yeah. So say, show up like you belong there. Even if you're not sure if you do, find the thing inside of you that you can say, this is where I add value. So I was recently coaching um, some early career 20 somethings who want to eventually get on boards. And I said, listen, you're you're the people who know a lot about digitalization. You know about, you know, technology, new economy. You're a fresh voice. They've all heard each other before. So come in proud and be the fresh voice. I, or I you, yeah. Give you give you give you one uh, example. OK, there was a lot of people who were saying, hey, there's a Bill Gates and this is me. I will never be that good like him. There's a huge, you know, gap. I was doing something different. I was not saying I'm the same like, but no, not at all. I was like, okay, I think I'm very good expert on emerging markets. And then suddenly in my brain, I was getting very close. You know what I mean, right? Yes, this, yes, this, you this found was, your much better in writing good software, whatever. Absolutely. But you can, this is the way, the same when Patrick Schick play first time against Ronaldo, I said, you can say, hey, I'll never be that good as Ronaldo, or you may say I'm 23 and I'm already playing with Ronaldo, right? This is it. It is about like, you know, growing, like be a better version of yourself every day, right? Closing, uh, closing the gap. I, I absolutely agree with you. And there are like, there are, guys, there are different, you know, power games. For example, if we talk about executive presence, if somebody will give your, you know, like hand over, you know, your shoulders, right? You may think, hey, this is like friendly gesture. It it can be, but it is really perceived as I'm senior over you, you know, right? Uh, very often, and and I there was a great guy who was like, I was a you know uh chairman between 2007 and, and 2014, and Bernard Vernier was a great he's a French guy. He was there like probably 15 years ago before me. And he was a great guy, but he, he was really authentic. And he was doing it very often, but from him, because he was like 65 years or 60 years old already, it, it was very authentic, you know, right? But uh, yeah. uh, th 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 this is it. And, you know, Chinese, for example, politicians and business people, they are very smart in how to use, because they are usually, you know, shorter, you know, right? I mean, usually not all, all the time, but they can, you know, play th th those uh, those things. So, you you Absolutely. you need to be Amy Cuddy. Amy Cuddy, she's a professor. She got uh, yeah. It, it's about power pose. Power posing. Power posing. Yeah, absolutely. It guys, it it costs you nothing to stay like that, but there is like eighteen percent more testosterone, your energy hormone, and your cortisol goes down by sixteen percent. So one third of your you know executive performance you can influence by your body. You know right, yeah. and it, it has. It has a lot of influence on the other people. And it, it has nothing, if, if somebody is tall or shorter, no. I think, you know, Napoleon, for example, was quite, you know, somebody somebody told me that Napoleon was Very not short. That, you know, right? Oh, but uh, uh, oh. if you take Sarkozy, unfortunately, he was by the court today, but uh, that's the former French president. He was also, you know, uh, uh, and he was quite charismatic. I'm not saying he was good politician or bad. And that's uh, about, you know, your, you need to make your opinion, but it was uh, charismatic, absolutely. Exactly. You need to show up like you belong there. I can tell you a perfect example. I showed up to, uh, at an offsite for a client, you know, a few hundred of the top leaders, chairman of the board sitting there. You can watch, you can see the people who believe themselves powerful because here's what's absolutely. happening. He's sitting in the back. He's sitting in a chair. He's sitting with his legs spread and arms out over two chairs taking up literally three chairs yeah, just absolutely. for his presence. Not a big guy, just owning his space. And there weren't enough chairs and I was wearing very high heels. I wanted to sit down. So I said, I could be scared. He's at a senior level. He's a yeah, client. Yeah. And But I just came up and I said, hi, how are you? Mind if I sit next to you? I don't have to play a power game with him, but I do have to come in strong and equal. And it's in those tiny moments. I specifically bring up a tiny moment because if you do it when it's tiny and relatively low risk, you train your brain. Hey, I didn't die. He didn't yell at me. I didn't get fired. It was actually fine. I got to sit where I wanted to sit. 
that's when you can start to take on more and more risks because showing up like a leader means showing up like you believe you belong there. Guys, if you if you wanted to look at somebody like uh, last three months, what happened? Emma Radicanu, she won US Open. She's a tennis player. She was among 16, uh, you know, at Wimbledon. But three months ago, nobody knew her. She was like 120. I'm not talking about her, you know, uh, tennis skills, but I'm talking, she's probably taking some anti imposter syndrome, you know, pills because she, she got like, you know, very natural courage. She just played tennis with, you know, Kate, with the, with the, you know, the, 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 the royal, you know, uh, the, 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 the vibe. Yeah. And she's really, she speaks, she's like 19 or 18. I, I don't know, you know, like very, very young. But she's really that, you know, person she speaks to the like TV channels like this is it, you know, right? She, for example, what she did now, she basically said, I cannot work with this coach, even though that coach helped her to win, you know, a U.S. Open. A lot of people are saying like this is a shit because, you know, he helped her and now she is firing him. But he got no experience with WTA, you know, uh, circuit. You know, with all of those tournaments and so on, she's she's basically saying, "I'm now, you know, like moving up, and I want to learn from the best, you know." And unfortunately, my coach was good for some period, and I need to, you know, what I mean, right? So th yeah. this is really like young lady, but really, if we talk about like executive presence, she's great, you know, like Shut Romanian up, yeah. Romanian father, Chinese mother, that's a good combination, you know. <laughs> so, yes. And the other thing is, when you show up like a leader, here's the thing. And I like to tell people, it's like if you invite someone over to your house for a right. dinner party. You have to act like the host, but everywhere you go. So when people come in, you greet them, you say, hello, how are you? You take care of them, you observe, you think about their needs. Same thing. So many people I know, they walk into a networking event. Am I feeling a little uncomfortable? I don't know if I know everyone. No, you're the host of this party. Walk up. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Do you need a drink? Can I get you anything? Let me keep you entertained. Let me show up like you are already a leader, like a dinner host. And that way you already show your natural leadership. You're not shy. Should they let me into their conversation? Not who should I talk to? Show up like you belong there. No, absolutely. Okay. There is a there is a question from my friend Michal uh, Konstatsky. Uh, you know, Michal, by the way, works in Switzerland. He's a great scientist, and he's running like international team. He's a really very smart, you know, person. Hi, Jan. Can you see any advantages, disadvantages of being East Eastern European? Does it determine us in the good or bad way? By the way, your English has improved brutally. Kudos to us. I, <laughs> well done, yeah. In my English, maybe I was tired, you know, uh, at that time. And uh, but what is what is helping me if I'm with some Americans together? So that that's you know good, right? Uh, but yeah, I, I tell you what I think it's advantage to be from Eastern Europe, right? We are very flexible people still because, you know, during the communist era, you know, you would need to do a lot of things like on your own. I give you one example. I was buying at that time the, the computers which were there was, you know, ZX Spectrum, which was like first, you know, micro uh, computer. Right? But we didn't have the money to buy like printers. So we were using like all fax machines or whatever we, we got, we reprogrammed them and so on. And so you you have this flexibility and ability to really solve the very complex issues in a very easy way. That's number one. And that's which is which I think it's good. Okay. Then I think technical education traditionally was on the very high level. Now education is not that great anymore in Eastern Europe, but technical education, at least like still 10, 15 years ago, was good. What is not good, there's a lot of people from Eastern Europe underestimating who they are. Like, hey, we are still, fuck it, you know, it's like 30 years after all of those, we are part of the Europe, we are part of the global world, whatever, you know, yes. right? All like companies are there, you know, there's like 30,000 Americans living in, in, you know, Prague only, you know, whatever. So we are like global, right? So there's no need to feel like, hey, I'm something, you know, less, right? 
because that's you know i i never i always it was a rather advantage like in with when i was negotiating with the european commission if i would be german british now brits are gone anyway <laughs> so you know they have their own issues with the oil and how to distribute it i understand you know that's called brexit that's called brexit if you are not if you are making political decision and it was purely political decision mm -hmm. and you don't think I, again, I think, you know, it was decided by the nation. That's fine. But they were not economically ready for that. This is the those are like economy and politics, two different things. Anyway, yes. so let, let's go back or, or French. If you would be one of those three countries, they, they were like fighting each other a bit in the European Commission. But I was like from Czech Republic and a small country. So I was like talking to everybody. Uh, right. And, and that was it. So I think it is good. Yeah. So I, I think we. In Eastern Europe, a lot of people are still underestimating themselves and overestimating the rest of the world, if, if you will. And for example, I mean, uh, uh, I, I have a lot of friends in Romania. I, when I was running Central Eastern Europe, which means 20 years ago, there were 1,300 developers from Romania working in Seattle in uh, right for Microsoft already at that time. Because Romanians were one of the best mathematicians in the world. They were like winning all, you know, Olympic games in, in mathematics. So there's a lot of, you know, uh, there's a lot of good things. And I, I would not, I mean, I would not underestimate it being like from Eastern Europe. I, I think that there is a, a lot of positive stuff. You need to also realize you have some genes like, hey, you know, play it safe. That kind of, no, no, you know, try to understand who you are. To really unlock, you know, your potential, who you can be. I mean, yes. look, I'm the guy. I was living for 20 years in the village. I was almost fired from university. My first job was I was, you know, a receptionist, right? And I was still, you know, executive in a big company working with people like Bill Gates and so on. And I, I think people should not make, you know, mental barriers in their brain, you know. I'm able to do it only like that. I'm able, like I have now, you know, Table tennis players, okay, and they are one of the uh, Hanka. She she is one of the best. She was like now third in the uh, uh, in the uh, you know masters in Europe, okay. So that was after thirty five years the best results in in Czech Republic, okay. So she was third, but in her mind it's like Chinese. I'm here. I'm one of the best in Europe, but Chinese are there. I'm not there yet. So I need to change it, you know, right? I'm not saying that she will beat all Chinese, you know, right? But you, if you change the mindset, chances are that you may beat some of them, and then step by step you can do. And that's the same in that's the same in business. Yes, and I feel I, you know, I think this relates well, Michal. It's a great question, and I think it also relates very well to the experience of me as a female. Because often, you know, females are judged in a certain exactly. way before. Just like I think, Michal, you're saying, are the Eastern Europeans judged in a certain way? So in some ways, we hold ourselves back. But some of the reasons we hold ourselves back is because early on in our lives or in our, in our careers, we had experiences that sent the message, yeah. we're lesser than, we're lesser than. So here's what you have to do. Filter all that garbage out. If you receive a message, you're lesser than, thank whoever said that. That's very nice that that's your opinion and put it away and show up again like yourself. I love what Jan said. Stop putting barriers. on. There's so much bullshit out there. We have enough people who are trying to bring us down, who are competing with us, who are being negative, who are judging us, who are, you don't need that from yourself, right? <laughs> So whatever, whenever that information is coming your way, throw it back out and recenter. Here's who I am. Here are my strengths. Here's the value that I bring. And I show up like that. Now we have two, one, two minutes left. If anybody okay. has a last can, question, up, pop it in. <laughs> so whoever has any last questions, pop it in. But I think this is so important. There are so many elements to what it takes to have um, executive presence. So many of you probably showed up thinking Jan and I were going to say, you know, make sure you mimic the other person. If they're sitting forward, you sit forward. Yes, there are lots of tips and tricks. We can teach you about charisma. You can read books about charisma. But the most important thing that you can do is center within yourself. Work through all the stuff that holds you back from feeling confident on the inside because when you feel confident, when you're ready to show up, guess what? All the rest of that other stuff comes naturally. It's so much 
harder to try to fake it than to just fix the root cause of the problem and really show up like you belong. Part of why Barack Obama is so successful, whether you agree with his policies or not, irrelevant, he believes in exactly what he believes. Like, this is what's best for the country. I need to be the leader who brings this message to them. So if someone says, you're terrible, he says, that's great, but I still have this vision for what I need to create. And he stays focused. Do that for yourselves. Yeah, because our brain tries to exaggerate because amygdala, which is that part of the brain creating, you know, tension and stress is five to 10 times faster than our logical part of the brain. So we try to like amplify, you know, negativity. It's really like whatever you manage to do very well, it's like Teflon. Whatever is going, you know, wrong, it's like Velcro. It's staying there, you know, right? And you go like in the in the circles. And, and this is it. So, you know, you need to really figure out, like, what is the source? And if, if somebody is telling you, hey, you are a stupid guy, whatever, Lisa said one good thing. It's like with the, with the present. If I will do, give, you know, some present to Lisa and she will refuse to, you know, get it, <laughs> guess what? The present will stay with me. So if you will refuse some, you know, bad comments, those bad comments, usually 90% of what is on the on the social networks, it's usually because those people, they have a problem with themselves. And I'm sorry for them, you know, but that's fine. And unless it's really very provocative or like very bad, you know, wording, I'm like, hey, it makes no sense, you know, to, yeah. to continue this discussion. Hey, there is a one last... Saying let it go. Uh, yeah. yeah. We want to bring that question up? Thanks, wonderful. I always say being Czech is not a pressure to succeed, but an opportunity to surprise. Very nice. Love question. it. Love it. And there is a LinkedIn user. And there's a uh, last question for Lisa. Hi, Lisa. I understand how you cope with our sanity during the meetings, but is there something which helps you to recover? You know, like recover. I, I probably after if the meeting is not going, you know, very well, or if you, if you are tired, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I mean, part part of what helps me to recover, I don't know if you're talking, and you can put in here if you're talking about energy wise or just mentally yeah. making sense of it. What I've discovered is a lot of times when there's still uncertainty or a lack of clarity in a meeting, what we have to do is we have to figure out, so what are we unclear about? And because it's all swimming around, people are not really sure. Once you get, okay, so here's what's causing me uncertainty. I don't know if we're able to do this. Okay, so what's causing uncertainty about that? Well, it's because we don't know about this. Okay, is it that or is it this? Okay, so if it's sure. actually this, then what's causing uncertainty about that? And you get deeper and deeper. You actually name the uncertainties yeah. and really label them. And, and I yes. find this helps people to make really instant decisions because they now understand where was the, I can't make this decision, I can't move forward, we don't know how to go. Once you have the clarity on where you're uncertain of what information you need, you often find that it's really just fear-based. You just don't want to make the wrong decision. Yeah, there is a there is this easy to use tool. I think it's coming from 3M. That if you ask five times why, you are yeah. usually on the root cause. You know, right? So you are usually. Hey, we have a we have a very similar you know bottles today. Everybody stay hydrated. <laughs> Hydration very important. Okay. okay so one last you know, thing. Yeah. One last thing, because in case this question so, is about managing your energy, because yeah. I did also say yeah. I'm a highly sensitive person. I manage my energy before I go into a meeting, but maybe it's how do I recover after the meeting? Right. I make sure that at some point in every day I have ten minutes of silence. And so what that means is I close my eyes. I don't have to sleep. I'm not meditating. I'm not actively doing anything. What I'm actually just doing is shutting off stimuli. I also do small things. I know a lot of people, you don't have to volunteer if this is you, but a lot of people, for example, when they go to the bathroom, they take their phone, right? They're always on their phones. So I consciously make a decision. Hey, there are moments in the day when I need to put the phone down. And even if I'm waiting in line or waiting for, and I just, and I'm just going to reset my energy. So especially after facing uncertainty, just find a way to take some silence, no uh, new sound, no new problems, not checking email because I have three minutes, reset, and you'll be much more refreshed to then go take on the world again from there. 
No, I agree. I do the similar thing like following my breath, breathe in, breathe yeah. out a couple of times. Even if like somebody is trying to piss you off, you know, right? Especially <laughs> that before now. you react, it's good to breathe in, breathe out, then your reaction is more rational as opposed to emotional, you know, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, thanks very much for being with us. We will continue in two weeks. There will be a new team. We'll inform you, you know, obviously. Yeah, let us know if you have a theme you want us to cover. You know, follow Lisa if you are in on Instagram. Follow Lisa. Oh, yeah. I need more followers. Please do. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, thanks very much. There, there is a one book. If we talk about, like, leadership present, there is a one book from my, it's kind of my, you know, mentor Deepak Chopra, who also, like, endorsed, you know, my book, Positive Leader. And that book is called Soul of the Leadership. Okay. He's basically saying that a leader is soul of the organization and it's playing with, with that uh, team. So there's, there's many, obviously, many books about the leadership, but this, this is one I would definitely recommend you to read. Okay. Love it. Thanks very much. And we Thanks are, everyone. you know, basically putting it, it will be, you can, you know, share it with the, with your friends and whatever. It will be on LinkedIn and also on the, on the YouTube channel. Thank you. Have a Perfect. Good Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.